Hi, this is Tom Moore with AWS. In this video, we're going to talk about the AWS Server Migration Service and how you can use this service to quickly and easily migrate your servers to AWS. We're going to walk through the following areas. First, we'll talk about the Server Migration Service and what it is, how it works, and why you would want to use it to migrate your server instances. Next, we'll set up the Server Migration Service and configure it to replicate servers. After this, we'll allow the Server Migration Service to actually migrate a couple of servers into my AWS account. Finally, we'll have a look at the results and launch the servers in AWS. First, let's talk about what the Server Migration Service is. The AWS Server Migration Service, or SMS, is a service designed to help AWS customers migrate their servers from on-premise infrastructure directly into their AWS accounts. With SMS, you can choose to migrate from a single server up to thousands of servers quickly and easily from supported infrastructure platforms directly to AWS. SMS allows you to automate the schedule and track an incremental replication of live server volumes, making it easier for you to coordinate large-scale migrations. You can migrate servers either individually or as a set based on applications. SMS is agentless. This means you install a single virtual appliance onto your hypervisor, and SMS will take care of migrating your virtual machines to EC2 instances. There's no need to install software onto each machine. For my example, I'll be using Microsoft Hyper-V as my hypervisor. However, you can use VMware vSphere, Microsoft Hyper-V, Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager, or you can install the connector directly onto Microsoft Azure to migrate servers directly from Azure to AWS. Our website has complete documentation on the server migration service, including a setup guide that you can refer to at a later date to help you through your specific requirements. Let's walk through the steps required to set up the server migration service. We're going to start by logging into the AWS console. From the list of services, I can select the Server Migration Service. From here, we can open up the Getting Started Guide. This contains full instructions that you can follow later. I'm going to click Get It Started. This page gives you options for downloading the various connectors. Select the connector that is right for your environment. In my case, I'm going to select the Hyper-V environment. Click the button to download the file. The next thing I need to do is create an IAM user for my connector to use. From the Services menu, collect IAM I need to create a new user, so click Add User. Give the user a name. In this case, I'm going to say SMS for Server Migration Service. This user will not log into the console, so I'm going to click Programmatic Access and click Next for permissions. For permissions, AWS provides an AWS managed policy with the correct permissions used for the Server Migration Service. I want to select this policy, Server Migration Connector. Click Next for Tags and Next for Review. Now I can click Create User. Now that the user has been created, make a note of this access key and the secret key. Note you should always keep your secret key private as it will provide access to your AWS account. I've copied the credentials off into a temporary file to reference later. I can now click Close. The next thing I need to do is set up the AWS connector in my Hyper-V environment. You can see here I'm in the Hyper-V manager. I need to import the virtual machine from my download. Select the virtual machine and then select the import type. The 
This process will then copy over the virtual machine into Hyper-V and set it up to run in my environment. After a short while, the migration service connector is set up on my Hyper-V environment so I can start the instance. Now that the virtual machine is fully running, I can get the IP address here and connect to the local web page on the running virtual machine. This will help me finish the setup and link the connector to my AWS account. Let's click Getting Started. There's a licensing agreement to read and accept. I then need to create a password for the console to prevent unauthorized access. I've got some instructions here that I can use to reconfigure the network on the virtual machine if I need to. I have some options to automatically configure auto upgrade of the migration service and the logs. I'll click Next. And finally, I need to provide the AWS region and the security credentials I'm going to use in order to connect into AWS. I'll retrieve these from the details I saved earlier when creating my IAM user. I then need to choose my virtualization manager type. I'm using Hyper-V, so I will select that here. I need to provide the username and password that I can use to connect to my virtual machines. If you're using a domain, which is recommended, you would provide a domain user. In my case, I've simply created local accounts. I also need to connect to the Hyper-V machine that is running all my virtual machines. So I'll provide the host name for the box and click Next. Once that's done, I can go to the connector dashboard and I can see the details of my connection here. This is going to validate that my connection is up to date and that I have access into my AWS account. Once the connector has been completed, if I return to the AWS console and go back to the server migration service, I can see that I now have one connector running and zero active replication jobs. I'm going to go to my connector here and I can see the state of my connector is healthy. Under servers, I can see that I have no active servers that have been imported. I can click import the server catalog. This will contact the collector running on my environment and import the series of servers that are running in my environment. You can see here that the collector is completed, getting the details for the servers running on my environment. And the final step in the preparation is to set up the initial replication of my servers. Setting up replication for your servers is, can be done by selecting the individual servers, clicking Create Replication Jobs. Here we want to specify the details of the license type. In this case, because we're migrating Windows servers, the automatic default is to use AWS provided licenses. You have the option of selecting Auto, AWS provided instances, or BYOL, or bring your own license. The next thing is to set up the replication settings for the individual servers. I'm going to leave the defaults here. The default settings configure the servers to replicate every three hours. This means that if you continue to make changes on your local servers, the changes will be replicated up into AWS so that when you launch a copy of the migrated server, it'll be up to date with those changes. I can also configure the option to start replication immediately upon completion of the job.
This replication process will take some time. I'm going to pause this video and allow the replication to complete before I continue with the migration process for these servers. I've left my servers replicating overnight. Each server has run through its replication process a few times in order to capture any ongoing changes that would have been made. If I look at the list of servers and click through to the replication job for that server, I can look at the run history. I can see that each time the replication job has been run, and I can launch an EC2 instance based off the image that was created from that run by clicking here on Launch Instance. This will take me into the EC2 console. I can choose an appropriate instance size. I can configure the instance details as per normal. And I can see here that the root volume is going to be based off a snapshot that was created by the server migration service. And a size calculated based off the snapshot size. Here I can click Review and Launch, and then Launch My Instance. As usual, when launching an EC2 instance, I can specify the key pair that I can use to launch in and connect to that instance. My instance will then launch just like any other EC2 instance and allow me to log into it. Launching single instances is a great way to be able to migrate single servers. However, many of our applications require multiple servers in order to run completely. So let's look at the idea of launching an application. I'm back in the server migration service again. Most business applications require multiple servers in order to function properly. This may include a web front end, database servers, and app servers that provide business logic. The application section of the server migration service provides a convenient way to group these application servers together and launch them as a single stack into your account. Select Create New Application. Provide a name for the application. Select the servers that you want to include into your application. It's important to note here that a server can only be part of a single application stack. You can optionally add servers to specific groups, such as database servers and app servers, but I'm going to skip this and go straight to Add Tags and then click Next. Finally, I'm going to create the application group. The next thing to do is set up the application replication settings. I'm going to use the defaults for all the settings here. The next thing I need to do is provide the license type I'm going to use for my application servers. The options are automatic, AWS provided license or license included, or BYOL, or Bring Your Own License. By selecting Auto for Windows Server instances, we'll automatically choose the AWS provided license. I'm going to click Next and click Save. The next thing to do is configure my launch settings. Launch settings help determine how the server migration service is going to launch your individual instances. I can either choose to use automatic role creation, in which case the server migration service will create and use its own role for interacting with my account, or I can specify my own role. I'm going to leave the default of allow automatic role configuration. Click Next. I then need to configure my target instances. I'm going to choose the instance type which determines the type of EC2 instance that's used and the family and size. I'm going to choose a key pair, which will help me to log into the server. I can optionally provide a configuration script and a script type in order to configure my servers as they launch. 
In this case, I don't need any external configuration scripts, so I'm just going to click Next. The next thing to do is specify the target network that you're going to launch your servers into. In this case, the VPC, or Virtual Private Cloud. I can choose the subnets that my application servers are going to launch into. And I need to specify a security group. I can optionally check the box to make these instances publicly accessible, which means they're given public IP addresses and DNS names. Keep in mind that making them publicly accessible still does not allow RDP or SSH unless you have allowed that in your security groups. I can optionally provide application and instance validation scripts to test my application. I'm going to skip those for this demonstration and go to Review and then click Save. Here my application is getting ready to launch. The server migration service wants to make sure that my replications are up to date. In this case, it's going to wait until it completes replicating, and then I will be able to use the Actions window to launch my application. We'll wait now for the replication to complete. After a few minutes of validation, my application status has gone to Launched. Let's look at the resources that were created in my account. You can see here that the result of launching the application has been a CloudFormation stack created on my behalf. As with all CloudFormation stacks, we can look at, at the resources that were created, including two servers which are starting up. I can see here in the EC2 console the servers that have been created as part of my efforts to launch servers in my account. I've got the single instance that I created earlier and launched, as well as the two instances that are initializing based on my application here. Once these have completed my status checks, I should be able to log into them and see the servers in place. After all of the status checks have been completed and the servers are ready to log in, we can see here that I can log into the instance and use the details that I used to connect to this instance on-premises. And this instance will be in the same state as it was when I replicated it. In this video, we were able to replicate the servers from my Hyper-V environment and launch them either as single instances or as a set of servers, making up part of an application. The guide on our website can walk you through the specific details for your specific use case. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.